Hi there, guys. Sorry I'm a bit late. Um, bit of an issue, technical issue with uh, getting me live on here. Um, my apologies. Okay, it's Heidi and I'm doing a post today for Riverside Bead. No, Riverside Crafts. Um, slightly linked with um, the Riverside Crafts box that's just been done. Um, and inside there you have this gorgeous stamp and Caroline did some absolutely beautiful cards and projects with this. Um, so I decided to just take one technique um, and see how many cards I, well, I could do more than that, but um, do a few cards in that particular technique, but in slightly different ways. Um, so I'm using my beautiful flower stamp today. And it is a lovely one. And I actually found this one is a really nice one. I wanted to do, um, at some point, I'm going to do a live for, um, with shrink, shrink plastic. And this one is absolutely beautiful for it because it's it's such a large one. And it when it shrinks down, it doesn't go too small. So I'm just going to uh, cut my, I've got some watercolour card here. I'm just going to put it Cut it in half and oops, half again. So I'm going to cut. I need at least three, but I'll do. In fact, no, I need more than that. So, okay. So I'll come back to that in just a second. So the three techniques that I've been using, I used a technique called um, spotlighting. So basically, it's taking a part of the image. And highlighting just one part of the image so the first one I did was this one okay and this is I cut out um, my little cutter. so I cut out an oval shape with my oval die and I literally just colored in so this one is um, this one I painted so this one is um, done with my distress inks and water, okay, and then I put a little um, sentiment at the side as well, okay, so that's the first one, so that was painting, okay, and then this one I actually printed onto some cream card and I printed, I um, cut through the card with my, um, with my die, okay, and behind it I put a piece of, of book paper and I had printed onto the book paper part, you know, uh, a section of my, uh, my flower thing and then I slid it underneath and just roughly by memory remembered where the shape was that I'd cut out so I could colour in and this was done with pencils and then the die that I cut it out with has they've all got like a little embossed edge on them so I just went round that embossed edge with a sharpie and then just added my sentiment on the side here obviously you can get more creative with your sentiments than mine they're rubbish but it just just wanted to use the sentiments that were on the stamp set. So, and this is the third one. And this one hasn't come out as clear as I wanted it to. Um, and I'm hoping that the one that I've got prepped will come out much, much clearer. Um, oh, let me just say with this, um, the book paper, you'll see inside. So the book paper I'd stuck to the inside of the card. And then I just put a piece of brown craft card over the top of it just to hide that. So that's how it was covered at the back. If you have the light going through it, it doesn't look as solid a picture. So, so this one is my lovely pixie powders. So basically what I did with this is I used this stuff called drawing gum. Drawing gum okay. And it's, um, it's like rubber. So you, you draw it on and I use my... Um, so I use one of these, my calligraphy pen. Let's hold it back a bit. So my calligraphy pen and just dipping it into the gum. And I drew round. So all the outline of the flowers, I drew round it. Okay. And then I threw my pixie powders over it. 
waited for it all to dry and I just let it dry naturally. I don't put the heat gun on it. And then you rub it and you can do it with your fingers or you can do it with a, a, a rubber as well. So you just rub it and it'll take off all that rubber and then it leaves the colour of the card underneath. So it is a white crack. Hi, Riverside Crafts. Um, so it leaves the colour of the card underneath. So it's left white under there for me. OK, so that's that one. And it's raised up on, you can see underneath there, it's raised up on, uh, what do they call them? Oh my goodness me, foam pads. And there's the link to the drawing gum if you want it. Um, and then I did the same with the, um, you can see it's raised up on foam pads as well, the um, sentiment. OK, so I'm going to show you this one first, I think. OK, so first thing I'm going to need to do is to... Oops, daisy. Let's put that over there. First thing I'm going to need to do is, oops, a daisy. Do my. I'm going to move you now, and I'm going to get in trouble for this because I have not cleaned my. I've not cleaned my um, stamp press, <laughs> and Caroline told me I had to clean it, and I forgot. So it is dirty, guys. So, but to be fair. It wasn't meant to put me right out. <laughs> okay, so you can just about see there. So, yes, to be fair, it doesn't affect the. Um, what am I doing? Press down to make it cling to your uh, your mat. It doesn't affect my um, my stamping at all. The mess on my pad because the um, the inks obviously dry very quickly um, so they don't transfer from one one time stamping and then doing another so okay so let's do this one just excuse a great big hand in front of your face I'm just pressing down on my stamp mat and that has come out absolutely beautiful Absolutely gorgeous. Now, we have found that the best um, ink to use is the Versa, the Versa Fine Claire, and this is Nocturne, um, because it doesn't make it all sticky. I'm just going to print another one, because you need two for each one that you're going to do. So, um, the Versa Fine Claire is absolutely brilliant. So, when you use the straight stays on, um, it makes it, as Caroline explained to me, it, it makes it sticky um, and it's it's a great ink and what have you. And it's, you know, it's good. It's permanent. And um, once you've used it, though, it does make it sticky. Um, and then when you print it, it sticks to your paper. And the nice thing with this is that you can, oops, I've got a little tiny bit where there's no ink on it. And I can see where it is just there. So I'm just going to go back. And this is what the beautiful thing is with, um, no, tiny bit at the bottom I missed. I'm not doing too well with this, am I? But this is the beauty of these stamp presses is that you can go back, they don't move. And now I don't, don't use stays on. They don't lift the image up off the table. So it stays where it is. You can actually go back and put a little bit of ink onto the piece that you've missed and go back and stamp it back on again and you get no movement. So they come out absolutely beautiful. I love, love, love this. And you could also do it. It doesn't have to be in the jar. You could also do this and cut round and have it just as a, a, a display of like a bouquet of flowers. It'll be absolutely beautiful. So this is the stamp from the um, from the uh, craft box you guys have. So it's on there. It's got three sentiments on it as well, which is fantastic. Okay. So let's move this out of the way for now. So let's take the ones that I've stamped. Okay, so... Just going to put that one there so I can see it. Okay, so what I would do first is I will just so 
on my card I'm just going to press my die onto it with um, with a bit of so with a bit of um, masking tape at the sides and I've got my friendly my little let's move it back a bit so you can see that so I've got my little what do they call it something gem is it I don't know but it's a nice one it's a nice little one to have on your table I'm just going to cut down that edge because it's a little bit wide for my and I don't need that so I'm going to run it through oops a daisy Off. I like this because it sits on my mat and it stays still and there we have so I have got my my little image that I've cut out so let me get some cardboard and I've got my gum Let's get you a bit further in. I'm going to tip it towards you so you can see a bit better. So I know what I'll do. I'll use a bit of masking tape just to hold it there. There we go. So I've got my gum next to me, so I'm just dipping my pen into it. Oh, let me just clean off. I have a little bit of you must clean off when you've used it because it's it's like once it starts drying it goes rubbery and it sticks in your in your piece so let's do it this way for you okay so you can see I've got my my pen and just very gently you just draw over now you'll know it's on there if you see a little blue line okay it should just give you a little blue line now if it opens up the pen and floods and gives you a big blob then Just use your, oops, it's a bit awkward doing it up like this, but I want you to see what I'm doing. So literally just go over all the outlines. If there's little tiny bits, so if there's like little dots and things like that, you can just, whoops, blank those in. Okay, so I don't know whether you can see. And you can see the blue on it but that's what you need to do okay so once you've done all that it takes a little bit of time then I would leave it to dry for sort of five or ten minutes okay leave it to dry on on a piece of card or a piece of um, plastic sheeting because you're gonna do your um, you're gonna do your spritzing and so I have got my my dies here. I'm just going to use my little water spritzer just to spritz on and we've got a bit of candy pink and I've only put a little bit of gum on because obviously we haven't got time for everything to dry so I have got one ready prepped. So I'll tip it up and show you in just a second. Okay, so that's what mine looks like. Can you see that there? Okay, and then I'm going to spritz it again. So it's really wet now. And where did I put those tissues? Oh, that's one. Okay, you can with a tissue, just if you've got too much of a concentration in colour, you can take a little bit off with a tissue. And you can also use any of the stuff that's sprayed around it just to move it over. So, can you see? So it comes out quite nice. And then when you see what happens with it, it's fantastic. So, I would now put that to one side and I would let it dry. Okay, 
and then when we come back to it this is what you would have so i have got let me find some paper to put it on because it's oops daisy so let me hold that up so this is what i have got okay and on all those little black lines that you can see i have got gum so i'm going to put it down on my mat i'm going to take an ordinary rubber and you can see from the ends of this rubber that i've used it before for this technique okay and i'm just going to give it a rub and you can do it with your fingers just rub it um but i find this gets it all off nice and nice and quickly okay So exciting when you get to the reveal of it. Okay. Just a little bit more. Right. I don't think I've got all of it by far, but let's show you. So you can see. So it makes the picture look really abstract, but you can see where the where the lines have come through. So I could do this a little bit, a little bit more. There's still a bit more to come off, I feel, on there, but I don't want to bore you with it. So once you've done that, you would then take your image, your main image, okay, and we need to find the space where this goes, which way it goes and what have you. So I can see that here matches up with, oops, let's hold this up for you. So I can see it right in this corner is this flower here. And I think that's where it goes. So you can match it up, it's a bit like jigsaw puzzle. Okay, and I can see from the from the stems, I can see the stems here. Okay, so what I do now is I would put my um, oops, it is, yeah, I'd put my phone pads on the back. So just just a couple, just to raise it up because it gives it a bit more depth. Okay, and. So, there you go. And then all I would do then is trim down the edges with my trimmer. Oops, let's see what that one is. So I've trimmed my edges down. Let me put you back now. So I've trimmed my edges down. And then I need to... So I've got some teal card. And then I would mount it on there. And then stick it onto my craft card. Okay, so I would cut around the edges, mat and layer it. And then I would do the same just on a piece of white card, stamp your sentiment, mat and layer it and stick that on with foam pads like the piece here. And then you've got that card finished. Okay, so let's put that one down there. Let's put those ones over there. Okay, let's have a look at another one that we've done. So, 
this one. Okay, so I've forgotten to bring my big die cutting machine because when I cut this die out, I have to cut with my card opened out completely to cut my die out. So normally I would put my, I haven't got my, funnily enough, I've, I've lost my octagon one. I haven't got a clue where it's gone. I'm sure it'll turn up, but I can't find it. So I thought we'd do it with a, a circle instead, but I haven't got my big shot that will take this card. So what I would do is on top of the card without this, or you can do it through both actually, you could do it through both, um, and cut the hole through the die on my die sh on my die cutting machine okay and in order to show you that where have I got so I've got the book page so I'm just going to take a section of masking tape So I'll take a section of this book randomly. You can, if you want to, choose when you, you know, picking the place that you want to cut your die out from. You can sort of pick a page where you've got words that mean something from where you cut it out. So there we go. Let's shove it through there. Let's pop it through my die. I might need a little piece of card on there. Let's take So, for this piece of book paper, okay, I used, oh, I didn't use my paints, I used my colouring pencils. So, I'll just show you one little bit on it and then tell you how the rest of it was created. So, before I do that, I need... I'm not doing this, that's wrong. Okay, I just need to, bear with me a second. I need to stamp it onto this cream card first and then I can see where I'm going. So I'm gonna stamp my image. Got ahead of myself then. Okay, so I've got some cream card this time, not white, well it's peachy actually, peachy card. Just going to stamp my image. Stamps. This I just get, can't get over how beautiful this stamps, you know. Um, that's, oh, I need to stamp my book paper, don't I? Where has it gone? Now, I would stamp it on a piece of paper, but I've used it already, so I'm just going to put a bit of ink on my stamp. There we go. And imagine I did it on a piece of paper and then I've got it ready to stand behind. So, you can see on here, ink on my hands and on the mat, but I've got an image stamped on here. And it would be a square image, oops, because no, I would have done it on a piece of card, a piece of book paper instead. 
So let's get my oops, Daisy, my colouring pencil. So I'm just going to colour the one in the middle just quickly. And colouring pencils work really well on this, so don't be afraid to use them. You can do your watercolour on it, but it does kind of make the paper get too wet. Um, and really, you're better off doing your painting on the um, watercolour card because it takes it much better. Okay, so you can see in a minute where I've coloured. And then all you would do, whoops, is take your cream section. So you take your... You take your cream piece, okay, and you would take your your die, find an area on here where you wanted to have the circle, cut it out and then with your, this would be a square piece covered in this stamp, you would find the right element to match up to at the back. Okay, so that's how I created that one. And then, where are we? So then we have this one. So this one is done on an oval and from the big image. So I'm going to move my tile. Let's get some white card. Oops, we cut this down. Two pieces of white card and again I can never get over this it always wows me when I do it and it comes out in such precise pieces so let's stamp, stamp this image again I do tend to, when I'm working on my own, I do tend to stand up to do the pressing down on it. So you just get a bit more pressure on it. But it doesn't matter if it doesn't come out. So you can see on here, you can see in the middle it's not come out properly. But because it doesn't move, you can go back in and focus on that area that hasn't stamped. And then you can see a whole image completely so you can always go back in with it so anyway enough chatting let's get this other one done okay. Missed a tiny, tiny little bit there. Oh, and that one. <laughs> just, honest to God, that's just. Let's see. Why is that not? Am I doing the wrong one? Okay. Done. So, great. Being able to go back into it. Right, okay. Oh, no, I haven't done that. Why is that not catching? Okay. So this one doesn't actually need to be as precise because this is the one we're going to pass out. So I've got another image as well. Okay. So with this one, card. with this one, we've got the main image. So I would use that one and mountain layer. And then use this second image to cut out my 
with my die cut. So let's get some tape. And let's choose where we're going to do it. Okay. Try and make it a little bit more interesting, but hey, hey ho. Let's see. Do, 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 do. This is great when you've got smaller pieces to do and smaller die cuts to do. Um, saves you having to get your big machine out, definitely. Okay. And you just pop it out like so. So here's my little image. Okay, and then if I take this, let's use a bit of that masking tape. So if I take that on here, and I've got my, these are my distress inks. So, the colours that I used for this particular bit here um, are Broken China, Salty Ocean, Dusty Concord, Milled Lavender, uh, Mowed Lawn and oops, Bundled Sage. So let's put a little bit of each on my mats. I'm doing it onto a tile, you can do it onto a plastic mat or um, a silicone mat, something like that where it's not going to, you're going to be able to wipe it off with your, um, with your baby wipes or something like that. So I'm going to use this as my water because I haven't brought a jar of water down either, silly woman. So I'm going to dip in and just hold this up so you can see bring it forward a little bit so just with um, a little bit of water and some shaky hand <laughs> I'm just going to paint in And don't forget, you can leave this, come back to it when it's dry and go back on it. Um, and it will give you slightly darker colours if you, if you add colour on top of it. So you can sort of leave it for a little while and then come back to it. And I have to say, I absolutely love painting with these Distress Inks. Absolutely beautiful. And the, um, the Oxidised uh, Distress Inks as well, because they are... Um, they're almost like a chalk paint, you know, they're a bit chalky, um, but they come out beautiful and, and both of them are, are both wonderful for um, painting with and working with as well, but I like, I, I really do like the painting with them, especially because I'm not, not particularly good at drawing, so stamping an image and colouring it in I know it sounds a bit childish, but I absolutely in love doing it. Um, I think it must be like a throwback to when you're younger. So there we go. We've got slight colour there. So keep adding water to your brush to reduce your colours down. And oops, a daisy. Let's. Um, if you want it very bright, then don't. You know, concentrated colour. Then don't. Don't add so much water to it, so I'm just going to make that edge a little bit darker so it stands out more. There we go. So that's what I did with this one. Okay, and then once you've done that, you can take this off. 
So imagine it's fully coloured and then you're going to find the spot where you need it to go. So I can see that it needs to go. Where are we? So it's definitely there somewhere. Oh, I know it needs to turn around. That's it. it's there it needs to be so that that flower would be colored in as well okay and I put it again on foam pads to raise it up and it makes it look amazing and you get this effect and you can see the foam pads under there and foam pads under the uh, sentiment as well so that's that card so three different ways of doing the spotlight effect I hope you enjoyed them. So there was this one where it was painted. Okay. Oops. Okay. And then we had this one where the book paper was coloured in with pens. Where did I put the other one? Oh, there it is. And then we have the one that we did with the um, writing gun. A drawing gum, sorry. There we go. So, okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed it. I love doing them for you, so it's it's really, really good. Um, it really stretches me as well, so I'm, I'm learning more techniques as I'm going through it as well. So, you know, I'm learning what different things pixie powders can do. I'm learning what how to use the distress inks and painting with them and you know using actually the drawing gum was I have to hands up and, and shout out to Rachel Southwell because she we started doing journals with Rachel uh, before lockdown and one of her techniques once we got locked down because we were missing it so much she sh showed she shared a link to a video that she'd done and she'd used the drawing gum and I'd never ever used it before so I shot down the shop and ask Caroline to please, please, please get me one off the shelf um, so I could have a go at this technique. And that was the first time I'd ever used it. Um, and now, obviously, I'm, I'm finding lots of different ways to use it as well. Um, you must, must try it. It's really good fun. I, I just bought a new one. So four ninety nine they are. Um, and Caroline put a link up before. So if you scroll down the comments... There's a link to the drawing gum on there. If we haven't got it in now, we can get some in for you. Um, so get get one ordered in, and and we can you can pick it up from the shop from the shop, um, just at the door. So it's like click and collect, or you can have do it online and have it posted to you. So quick recap. So there's the drawing gum one. There's the old book page one, and it could be. Um, you could use a, a, what do you call it, manuscript paper, so music paper. Um, it could be like calligraphy on it, whatever you want. But definitely using the outline there defines it. So that was actually done by the dye. It embossed that little outline. So that's quite good to do. And just use a Sharpie on it. And then finally, the one we just did, which is the painting one which I absolutely love and it doesn't have to be a small oval like this it can be a really big square or a round circle or even the um, scalloped circles and squares etc so don't think oh just because you've got a, a straight edge one that you can't use them the scalloped edge ones can be used just as well okay so have fun with it and um, it'd be nice to see if you do any dyes, you know, pop them up on the Facebook page so we can see what you've done. It'd be lovely to see if you've tried to try any of them at all and if you try it and do it differently, you know, it'd be nice for me to see and uh, a bit more uh, techniques for me. Okay, well, thank you for watching everybody and this is Heidi for Riverside Crafts. Um, thank you very much. I hope you all have a lovely Easter this weekend and, and bank holiday monday as well um and i'll catch up with you soon i think i've got another sort of two or three weeks before i'm on again for you but i look forward to seeing you very soon okay bye